testing, testing. Testing, testing. One, two, new camera. Two, three, new camera. All right, what's going on, guys? Didn't realize how much I like making YouTube videos until we dumped the camera in the water and then we couldn't get any actually decent quality content for a while. But new camera back. Got the chesty on, got a dash cam on, running three cameras today. So we should get some good angles, get some good shots. About out here today on a small little local lake, very small, very local, very much so a lake. And we're gonna try to catch us a bass or two. It's early March now, should really, really be biting. Flip an ace jig around, swim a punisher, swim jig around a little bit, and hopefully catch us a dang bigger or two. So without further ado, let's go. Kyle. What type of electronics are you using today to find these fish? I'm using super high modulus graphite blanks. Right here's about six foot, five, five and a half, five and three quarter feet. Let's pick up the old swimming jig one time. This is a, we went pretty compact with it right here. A lot more compact. Took off the white Punisher because it was getting some short strikes. I had a, I had a big, big bulky trailer on it. Catch a lot of water. We went a lot more compact right here. So it's gonna let the bait get down a little bit deeper. It's not gonna be quite as fun to fish with because you're gonna be able to watch it all the way back to the boat quite as good. But should get a bite or two on it. These two docks right here should be. Took my chunk. That's a good one too. God dog, dude. Look at that. That's, they might be beds actually. Took my dad gum chunk. Did you see him right there? What? You didn't see him? How big was he? We'll skip underneath. Let me drop the poles for you. See if they'll touch. In my opinion, it's just whoever the coach thinks is the worst. And, and it makes no difference what nobody else says. Big and oh, your heart. Look at that ace bass. How about that ace bass? Yours ain't bigger than mine. Opinions ain't really part of it. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Picture there beside that tree. <laughs> look. Look at that donk. He got a donk in his face. How about that for a donk fish? Dang do donk fish. It's a big one. Four pounder. Not bad. That's a He's male. He's got bulging guys for some reason. That's a male. Look at those guys. Four pound male. Little ace bass. Oh, don't don't it. Don't don't it. Kyle, are you ready for your question? Well, what? Are you ready for your question? I'm ready. Let's do some questions. So, what, what are we doing? I haven't been briefed on this. These, these are... Frequently asked questions. In the comment section of YouTube? Or Instagram. Or Instagram. So, everybody that asks questions all the time and maybe I don't respond to them, I appreciate you asking them. We're about to get to them right now. So, here's the FAQs, I guess it'd be called. Okay, number one. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite color if you only had to have one HG? Green pumpkin. Green pumpkin. Green pumpkin. And why? It's just you can catch them all the time on it year round. If the water gets extremely stained, you do need to go to a black and blue or a BB smoke, but green pumpkin will pretty much catch them nine months out of the year probably. So it's all good. Next question, are you ready? Hey, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, explain the power and action of your crankbait and bladed jig rods and why. I need so, a detailed explanation. My bladed jig rod that I'm skipping around docks most of the time is a seven foot three medium heavy fast. And the reason for that is, it's so important to get the cast to be extremely precise. 
and like make it make as small of a splash as possible that I want to stay with the seven foot three medium heavy fast because that's the rod that I'm the best at casting with and I can really control that bait having that fast action great bait rod on the other hand I'm not usually casting it casting it quite as tightly so I use like a seven foot medium medium heavy moderate and um that rod just really loads all the way down to like almost the real seat. It really has a lot of give to it. So I'm using like a small treble hook, like a number six, a number five treble hook. I'm not gonna pull the, the hooks too hard and rip a hole in the fish's mouth and end up losing that fish. So that's the reason I use both of the powers and actions I use. Okay, frequently asked question number three. Mm -hmm. What do you like and dislike about your Tour Pro? Okay, so the reason I decided to go with a Motor Guide Tour Pro, for one, it's, it has an extremely powerful motor. It's 109 pounds of thrust, but in this boat right here, I can easily go 2.7 to 3 miles an hour. And when I'm looking for bed fish and stuff like that, that's extremely important. Now, obviously, now there's a couple more troll motors that just came out that have even more power, can go even faster than that. But whenever I first started using this troll motor, it was like the fastest one on the market. And I know fast troll motors are not a huge deal, but I do keep it on 10, you know, very, very often. And it's also a very, very quiet troll motor. For some reason, people on leave comments saying it's loud. For one, that is a charger that I have in the boat that converts power from the uh, 12 volt to like an actual phone charger, like like a wall outlet, and it you know it actually has like a fan in it. So that's what you're hearing most of the time when you say it's a trolling motor. And what that does, it gives me a ton of power to like a laptop or my GoPro batteries or whatever it is that I'm using. And the trolling motor is actually quieter than other trolling motors. I don't know where y'all are getting that from. If you put a, any other brand trolling motor on here and put it on 100, like I leave mine on 100, it's gonna be extremely noisy as well. Okay, Kyle, question. Mm -hmm. If you could go back and redo one thing on Tennessee River, what would you change? I would change my rotation on day one. Why? Cause I think I have found a couple of extremely good areas and definitely some extremely good stretches, but I believe I genuinely believe that I hit them at the wrong time because on day two and day three I would hit the same banks two or three different times or the same little stretches or isolated little rocks or something I would hit them two or three times and I and there was a certain feeding window that was at a certain time of the day and on day one there was two major feeding windows and I missed them both in my good areas so if I could go back, I think I could dial in the feeding windows a little bit better and be at my best spots at the right time. And I think I'd catch a limit both days. On day three, I dialed it in, but I lost two or three keepers and only weighed in four. So day three, I didn't make it happen. But on day two and day one, I feel like I could have did a little bit better if I had the right feeding windows down pat. All right, so we wanted to go ahead and um, answer a couple of the questions that y'all had. And also we went out and flipped a little ace jig around a little bit on my local lake. Somehow still we're in the bad rotation with the cameras. Had one freeze, had the dash cam freeze whenever I caught like three or four fish and had the chesty off due to a dead battery for most of that time as well. So missed like three or four fish catches. That's how it goes though. At least we got the big one on video. And we're about to go fishing again. So I appreciate y'all watching. Hit that subscribe button, turn the alerts on. Gonna be a good year. Gonna be a fun one, cause we're about to go bust them on Pickwick this coming week. Hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, so you don't miss anything.